Last Sunday, we celebrated Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus lives in our hearts by the powerful Holy Spirit. Like the song we sing, he lives, he lives. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Are you old enough to remember that pink Energizer Bunny commercial who keeps going and going and going? Well, that would be how Peter and Paul live for Jesus. Nothing or nobody could stop them from preaching the good news of Jesus. They knew with certainty that Jesus had died and was risen from the grave. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 14, And if Christ has not been raised, then all of our preaching is useless, and your faith is useless. Our faith is all about the resurrection. This is our hope. This morning, I want to focus on the scripture from 1 Peter 1, 3. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Peter is writing this letter to Christians who've been exiled to other lands. They're going through persecution with many trials for their newfound faith. He's trying to give them hope in a tense situation. And we can relate to this with the quarantine it's trying our patience in many ways. What brings you hope? We need to take just one day at a time, listen to the updates on new developments, then turn off the TV. Know that God is in control. God has you in the palm of his hand. Peter makes a link between the resurrection of Jesus that brings our new faith and new birth as a Christ follower. It's all through God's grace and mercy. They term it being born again. You can't have a Christian who's not born again. In, first, or in John 3, 1 through 3, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. With certainty, Peter wrote to the believers who were going through or about to go through difficult times and circumstances, and he reassured them and us that God has provided for our survival. First Peter 1 says, praise God. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope based on the resurrection of a Lord and Savior who lives. Seeing how the resurrected Jesus changed Peter's life to the extent that this fisherman was all in for Jesus, Peter knew that Jesus was the Son of God who left the glories of heaven to save us from our sins. In the classic novel, Little Lord Fauntleroy, a young boy living in poverty in America, learns that his deceased British father belonged to a noble family in England. He learns that he is the heir to this state and he will go by the title of Lord. What an honor. This is our story as believers in Christ. Our father has granted his children an eternal inheritance that no one can destroy or take away from us. Along the way, we'll have fiery trials that strengthen our faith by bringing us closer to God. I think of the verse in James 1, 2, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. The testing of your faith brings perseverance. Our worldly culture today is like a ship in a storm with no hope, but know this comforting truth. Remember, nothing stops God's purposes. But when we're in the trials, how do we silence fear and keep up our courage? By keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. Peter and Paul knew the price that they were bought for. Knowing this, they surrendered their lives to God. Remember what the enemy causes for evil, God will bring it for good. No storm or trial is accidental. The hope of the gospel anchors us in the midst of storms and trials. In Isaiah 43, God tells us in our uncertainty, 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, since you are precious and honored in my sight. And because I love you, do not be afraid, for I am with you. With your anchor in the hope of the Lord, you'll give hope to others. The virus is spreading until we get a vaccine to stop it. But there is nothing that can, that can stop the spreading of the gospel. How will putting your faith anchor in the gospel give hope to others? In our Zoom over Sunday coffee, many said how strong Christians had come along beside them and helped grow their faith. Who can you pour into? We all have a breaking point in trials when we're tempted to say to God, this is enough. Usually we need to shake off the devil. Know that God will equip you with all you need to accomplish the work that he's called you to. How long will it be to we're back to normal? We don't know, but we know that God is working. Paul said, to live as Christ, to die is gain. It was a win-win situation. When we're living, let's be fruitful. Let's be writing. We could be studying or serving others. Think of one or two people who you could be praying for, for them to come back to Jesus. When I was a kid, each year my mom would have a secret prayer pal where they'd exchange names and pray all year for that person. Where has God strategically placed you to build a relationship with the unbelieving world so that you may further his kingdom? The hope of the gospel motivates us to share it everywhere with everyone. During the quarantine, some are struggling with feelings of no purpose. They're out of their routine, but you can start a new routine. They say we need seven hugs a day, but we can't hug, but we can come along beside someone lifting them up in prayer, calling them, texting them. Let's not go back to our old normal, but start a brand new regimen, putting God first. Think about this. Not even a sheltering place can stop the work of advancing the gospel. Can you imagine if every believer was revived by prayer as they take time at eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning or evening, and some of our believers are doing this, praying for the nation, our leaders, our spiritual leaders, our communities. Christians never shut down or retire. Peter and Paul were dedicated with laser-like focus, spreading the gospel to the ends of the earth. In Acts 1-7, Jesus promised the disciples, it is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God is unstoppable, he is faithful, during this sheltering in place, we're under house arrest. Let's not waste a single moment of it. When Paul was in house arrest in Rome, he wrote many books in the Bible. When trials overtake you, remember God's promise. He is with you. Allow your heart to be anchored in the hope of the gospel that he is with you. What eternal work for God have you been putting off but now you have time to do it. Will you allow him to work in your life like Peter and Paul with all boldness and without hindrance? And when you're running out of energy, ask for God's strength so you can be that energizer bunny powered up by God so nothing can stop the spread of the gospel. Now we're gonna join in this time of communion, humbly coming to God asking Jesus to forgive our sins. John Wesley won a communion at least every week with the new believers. We remember how Jesus died for our sins on the cross. During this time of communion, you can go get some bread, crackers, Cheerios, some juice, so you can join along. 
At Jesus' Last Supper, he took the bread and he said, This is my body broken for you. And then he took the cup and said, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for the Bible that tells us about your promises. Let's not just accumulate Bible knowledge, but help us to apply your word and truth to our life so that we are transformed for your glory and to your likeness. Lord, would you bring to our mind one or two persons we can be praying for each day for a whole year to soften their hearts so they would have a relationship with you. Let's be ready to share Jesus with them. This could mean the difference between life and death for them. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm in Odell, and I love the stained glass windows. This one, especially Jesus knocking at your heart's door. He's just waiting for you to open the door. There's only one knob on the door and it's on the other side. There's no knob on the door, no doorknob for him to open. We have to open the door for him. And, and Jesus is our good shepherd. We'll see you next week. Have a great week.